Here's another exercise on distinguishing whether two molecules are enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same. So see if you can do this for yourself. Press pause, work on this by yourself. When you're ready, press play, we'll go through it. Okay, so let's have a look at these two molecules. Remember that one way we could do this is rotation. I'm not saying you can't do this, but we're not gonna do it this way. It's just that we've got a little bit more robust uh, practical method that'll help us tackle even situations which are pretty complicated, which is gonna be a little bit more reliable than rotation. It's really easy to make mistakes. So I'm just gonna try this alternative method out. Okay, remember number one is we wanna check for connectivity you also want to then calculate or figure out rs for all stereocenters and then you also want to double check for symmetry okay so three steps in being able to distinguish whether three these two molecules are enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same. Okay, first of all, connectivity. How are these two molecules connected? Are they connected the same way or a different way? And remember, we're not looking at dashes of wedges here, we're just looking at what each atom is attached to. So carbon one is a CH3, carbon two is attached to an OH, carbon three is attached to an OH, carbon four is CH3. So I'd say connectivity here is actually exactly the same. Okay, so they're not constitutional isomers. I mean, they're clearly isomers, but they're not constitutional isomers, so they have the same connectivity. That means that we're going to have to calculate R and S for all stereocenters, which means that we need to identify the stereocenters first. And hopefully you can see that each of these molecules has two stereocenters. So we've got a stereocenter here and a stereocenter here, and here and here. And it might also help to draw in the hidden or implicit hydrogens in each case. Now we come to numbering the priorities for each of these stereocenters. So for let's say this first stereocenter on the left, we ask ourselves what atoms is this attached to? got a carbon in the middle here it's attached to a oxygen a carbon another carbon and then a hydrogen so among those four we have oxygen being number one hydrogen number four carbon on the right and carbon on the left so these are the same so we're gonna have to go a little bit further break the tie uh, to see whether which has the higher priority here so this carbon here on the left is attached to three atoms, H, H, and H. This carbon here on the right, if you look closely, is attached to oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. So we can actually put those in the order, sort of going from highest to lowest, oxygen, hyd carbon, hydrogen. So oxygen beats out hydrogen. This is gonna give us, our second priority is gonna be this carbon, and our third is gonna be the CH3. Okay, so OH, and then CHO, CH3 is priority number two um, because it's attached to O, C, and H. Priority three was methyl group and priority four is a hydrogen. So in what direction do these four groups go? Well, we're going from one to two to three. This goes in a clockwise direction. And this is okay because the hydrogen's in the back. The hydrogen is a dash. So it's going clockwise, therefore it's R. Okay. Now what about the other stereocenter? Uh, let's just do the calculation for that. We're gonna find actually it's pretty straightforward to do now that we've done all the heavy lifting for stereocenter on the left. So the OH is gonna be priority number one, the O specifically. Uh, hydrogen will be four. This carbon which is attached to O, H, and C is priority two, and CH3 is priority number three. So this would be one, two, and three. And this H here is a wedge, just keep that in mind. So this would be going clockwise, but this hydrogen is a wedge, it's not in the back. So it's actually counterclockwise. We're gonna go in the opposite direction instead. 
which would make that S. So this is R and S. And now we can look at the molecule on the right and try to figure out what is the RS value for the molecule on the right. So same idea here, priority one is our OH, priority four will be our H. Uh, we've got a carbon, another carbon. You'll see that the connectivity here is the same, so actually this saves us some time. So we've got priority one, two, and three going, it's going clockwise. However, hydrogen is in the back, so it's actually gonna be the opposite direction. So if you see the hydrogen in the front, you're gonna flip, it's gonna be the opposite of what you initially determined. Okay, so instead of clock, clockwise, it's counterclockwise. Remember, that's gonna make it S, okay? And then, actually, let me do it. So, so this is priority. This over here is, we said it was originally clockwise, but it's counterclockwise, so it's gonna be S. And this carbon over here, uh, likewise, we'll do the priorities here as well. So this will be priority one, priority two, priority three, and priority four. So that should be originally counterclockwise, but hydrogen's in the front as well. So it's actually gonna be the opposite direction. It's actually gonna be clockwise, which is R. Okay, so how are these two things related? We've got R, S, and S, R. Now ordinarily, we'd think that two molecules that have the same connectivity and opposite R, S would be enantiomers, right? That's our first guess. I mean, it's got, if we've got R, S, and S, R, then they have same connectivity and they have opposite configuration of their stereocenters, therefore they're enantiomers. Not always the case. Here is the exception. This is why we do step number three. We wanna double check for symmetry. And if you look at um, the arrangement here, notice how we've got RS. This is a little bit of something to watch out for. All meso compounds um, have opposite RS. Uh, so in other words, one side of the molecule is the mirror image of the other side of the molecule. So this means that this stereocenter here, we said that this was R, and this stereocenter here is S. These are the mirror images of each other. Uh, if we did the bond rotation here, it'd actually be a little easier to see that there actually is a mirror plane here, and you can really see it here right? You can really see it here. So this is S and this is R. So this is achiral. This is achiral. It's, it's a meso compound because it has chiral centers, but it has a plane of symmetry. And this is why you double check for symmetry. So this is achiral and this is also achiral because there's also a plane of symmetry here. So these are actually meso compounds. And because they're meso compounds, it's basically two different ways of drawing the same molecule. So they're actually, in this case, they are the same. So very common kind of question to, to uh, run into sometimes call this the meso trap because it's so easy to miss that uh, these two molecules, even though they, they might look like they're enantiomers, are actually the same. And they're the same because they're basically two ways of drawing the same achiral compound. Uh, compare it kind of like drawing these two letters, letter E and the other opposite letter E, and where they're mirror images, but they are superimposable mirror images. They are super imposable mirror images. So they're the same. Trick question.